Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. In this video, we're going to do what I'll call an intermediate workflow. We're going to style the photo from the ground up, adjusting the sliders, doing a little bit of light retouching and a little light masking as well so we can selectively apply certain filters to certain areas. So I have this photo here of a sunset and I always do like a bit of an image assessment before I start into my develop work. So um, overall, the the yellows are very hot right here in the center, so I want to tone that down a little bit. And I need to level the horizon. That's a little crooked. I see a couple of dust spots here we'll need to take care of. And also, um, I want to clean up like uh, some of the silhouetted people that are here and like this signpost here. Those aren't adding to the story of my photo, and uh, especially the ones in that lower left corner. They're a little distracting. They're pulling my eye away from what I want to really look at, which is this beautiful sunset. So let's take this photo over into develop and get started. I'll begin with taking care of some of the image cleanup. We need to level that horizon and need to take care of a couple of dust spots, remove some distracting elements. Let's start with leveling of a crop tool here, and it has a level built into it right up on the top. I'll click on that and I'll just draw a line around my horizon here, along my horizon. Right about there looks good. And now that's going to be nice and straight. We'll go ahead and click apply on that. And then for dust spots, I see one, two right there. I'll use the retouch brush and click, click on those. Now for the individual people I want to remove. I'm going to do two things here. First, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do this type of, of retouching work. I want to be zoomed in. And also, I'm going to use the Perfect Eraser, which is a content-aware replacement tool. So let's first get zoomed in. So we'll zoom in, and we'll take care of removing these people from the scene. And I'll get this Perfect Eraser going. And the way it works is very simple. You're just going to draw around and over what you want to remove and let the eraser do its work. That looks good. We'll do the second set of people. And I'm going farther down below like that silhouetted line there because I know that you know the people's legs are things down there. I'm, I'm going to keep that part dark in the photo, but I want to make sure that I let the eraser know that there's an entire person there. It needs to be removed completely. Now the one other item I want to take care of is there was a signpost. Here it is. So that signpost goes all the way down to the beach and up here. We'll see how this one does. This will be a little more challenging because of that wave crest that's there. We'll give the eraser a chance, and if it doesn't do a good enough job, we have one more retouching tool called a clone stamp we can use to help clean it up. You know what, though? This did really, really well. Uh, maybe, maybe a slight amount of fuzziness there in the center. And that happens sometimes. We usually have to use these tools once or twice to get things nice and cleaned up. I'm going to zoom back out. And now our scene is much cleaner. From here, we'll do the actual processing. We'll get into the styling and adjusting some of the sliders here. We'll begin in tone and color, doing our basic uh, adjustments of exposure. And I like to have the levels open for that. So I have very rich shadows, and I've got details all the way through this bright spike in the highlights, which is the sun. We expect that because we're shooting into the sun. That's going to be white hot. Uh, but I want to get these yellows toned down. So I think the first thing I'll work with is the, the saturation slider, actually, and take that down some. The other colors in the scene we can use the Vibrance slider. And Vibrance is, is a, I think of it as like intelligent saturation. It's going to increase color tones in colors that are muted. So saturation is just color everywhere. Vibrance is looking for colors that are more muted, and we'll increase that to give a little more richness to some of the other oranges, yellows, and blues that are in the scene. Since my exposure is good and I have good white and black points, uh, just based on the histogram. I think the one slider I will play with is midtones. And midtones just going to kind of shift things back and forth here. I'm going to open this up a little bit so things are a little brighter. So this is a good baseline. The photo overall is well exposed. We can of the detail that I want to have. I want to keep that foreground silhouetted, so I'm not going to open those shadows up. Now what I want to do is I want to draw attention to the clouds, so add a little more uh, localized contrast into those and take care of a couple more color tones. I'd like the blues in the sky to be a little richer and then really warm up this upper part of this, this cloud basin here. So we'll move over into the effects module next. I'm gonna add the dynamic contrast filter. 
Now this is adding contrast to the scene as a whole. It's entire entire uh, photo is affected. So I'm watching what's going on with these clouds here and I'm gonna dial back the strength. And so if I go to zero, we have no contrast. And I start to increase it up there. Somewhere in this neighborhood looks good. And again, I'm watching the photo. The number that I end up with isn't the important part. It's the look on the photo. Now I want the contrast to be looking like this here, which is great, but I don't want as much of a contrast boost everywhere else. So I'll use one of our masking tools. We have a masking gradient. I'll select that. The shape is gradient. Just drop it onto the scene. And you can tell this has removed the contrast from the upper part of the scene. I'm just going to use this and rotate it around and roughly angle it so that we're covering this cloud here. We can feather that gradient out a little bit. And lastly, I'll take the strength of that mask and lower it about halfway. So what the net result is, we're adding contrast at full strength here and at partial strength for the rest of the scene. We have this little mask here. We can see that as well. If I go into view the mask, this is what the mask looks like. Right? So that was a very simple operation with the gradient. And the result is before the contrast and after. We get a little more of those details in the clouds. And uh, we are we're just using some very simple techniques, not having to do any painstaking masking work. Since we're working on the sky, let's also warm it up. I'm going to move into the local adjustments now. Now, local adjustments, as you recall, by design, these are to be selectively applied in certain areas. So I'm going to stage the sliders first. I want to warm some things up. So let's just increase warmth. Let's just say 50. That's a good round number to begin with. And I want to apply this to just the sky. Well, we have those same masking tools available to us. In this case, we have separate tools for local adjustments. But they work the same way. I'll get a local gradient and I'm going to do that same rotation technique. And you can see that the warmth is increasing in this upper part of the photo, right? If I go into that masking view, I say view, the white reveals, black conceals. So here we are revealing the effect of these sliders. Close that down. And I think also I'll open the shadows up a little bit and maybe nudge the exposure up just a tiny bit as well. And this is a nice feature of the local adjustments. We're doing a lot of the things we might do in tone and color, but we're doing it to selected areas of the photo. So now this sky is looking nice and warmer there. So that's before and that's after. Last but not least, I want to work on the blues in this part of the sky. And so we'll add a second local adjustment. I'll stage the brush and this time I want to cool things down. So I'm going to use the temperature in the reverse direction. Let's just get something we'll be able to see and we can fine tune it later. Local gradient, I'm going to drop that here. But this time I'm going to choose a different shape. There are different shapes of gradients. In this case, I'm going to choose center so that I'm applying the effects of these sliders to inside this you know, oval shaped mask. So if I push that over here and stretch it out, I'm going to just quickly toggle it before and after. Look at those blues, right? Those are getting much cooler. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's pretty pleasing, actually. I'm going to maybe narrow that down, stretch the feather out a little bit. And let's now fine tune our sliders. We can add a little more vibrance. And that's going to increase and enrich those blues. Let's play with the highlight slider. See about darkening those blues a little bit. Somewhere around there looks pretty nice. And maybe even the exposure slider. What if we nudged exposure down just a tiny bit? There we go, before and after. So that's nice. That's a nice play of those cooler tones against the warmer tones in the sky. And so this photo is complete now. So you know, we've, we've done a handful of things. We added a couple of filters. We did some light masking. We did some light retouching. And we came away with, here's our before. And here's after. So that's a pretty marked improvement with not a whole lot of effort. So that's uh, an intermediate workflow with On One Photo Raw.